Okay, this is word processing standard five. We're going to be working with putting tables into a document. It's relatively easy to do. We're going to go to the insert tab. And on the insert tab, we're putting something in here. We have the tables group and the tables icon. If you're not exactly sure how big you want your table to be, just create one. I'm going to show you how to add rows and columns to it later. So let's just make a simple maybe four by four table. And you can see that was really easy to do. If I want to add some rows, I can do a couple of things. I can right click and I can insert a column to the left, a column to the right, a row above, a row below. So let's just insert a row below. I can, I can do that. If I had too many, I could again, I could go to delete rows and I could take whatever rows were highlighted out. Okay, so I've added some data to our table here. I've also added a few more rows. Um, I'm going to start compiling a list of who the signers of the Declaration of Independence were. So across the top, I have brave patriots listed. Now, depending upon who you are, you might say they are ungrateful, treasonous colonists. But I'm going to grab this cell here, and I actually want to center this across. So I grab all four of these, and if I go into my Layout tab, you can see that since I'm on a table, I do have a contextual menu. Okay, I have a Design tab. I have a Layout tab. In my layout tab, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to merge these cells. So instead of having four different squares, I now just have one. And I have the option here of going back to my home tab. I could make this a heading if I wanted to, uh, so that it fits maybe with my style. Maybe I'm going to make it intense right there. I can also, let's highlight this cell again, just that cell, thank you. I can also in my home tab, I could center it. So I have many of the same options that I have with, with regular text. If I wanted, I could make it so that it appears on the top left of the cell, the far right. And that's not going to make much difference to us right here. We can't really see that, but let's make that cell bigger. So if I go to the bottom right, I can make it so it's over here to the right side, bottom, middle. So you can see I can do some different things with where it is, is being uh, centered at in the cell. I've also got these this list here of by state who some of the signers were so again I can also since I was available merge uh, going across I'm gonna merge going down highlight these cells again go into layout let's merge these cells and now I have just Georgia and let's center this North Carolina had three signers so I'm gonna grab these three cells here let's merge these and let's center those so you can kind of see that I'm getting a list of who the signers were and by which state they were in. Again, we'll do two more here. Merge, and I'm going to center it. And then Virginia, this is an incomplete list of Virginia, but it got us far enough here to get us some data to see what we're looking at. So I'm going to merge this cell again and center it. All right, let me show you one more way that we can create a merge cell. Uh, if I'm in my table tools layout, I have a tool here called the eraser. If I select the eraser, I can just click on lines that I want to get rid of until I have the four that I want. And then again, I can just uh, center it both, both horizontally and vertically. One other thing we can do in the cells is we can change the direction that the text is going. So I've selected the Maryland cell, and again, I'm in my table tools layout. Here is the text direction. You can see I'm flipping it pretty easily. It works out pretty well with Maryland because we have enough room, but if I go to Georgia and I start working on the text direction, you can see it breaks this apart. Now, in order for me to make this fit, I can grab the bottom of the cell here and make Georgia fit, but you see what it does to the rest of these cells right here. Because we have these merged cells, that's one of the problems we run into. So I'm just going to undo what I've done here, and we'll go back to just having the table that we had to start with. We're going to move over to the design tab now so if we click on the design tab this allows us to use some pre-built styles for our table uh, as i look at some of these if i choose this one it's a nice grid and it'll give you the name when you hover over it after a little while so if you're looking for a particular one uh, perhaps you were taking the microsoft office specialist training it'll ask you to choose a grid table five dark accent six from the grid tables i'm going to just choose one that's blue here what I've done, I did that deliberately. You can see I'm missing my text. So that's probably not the best choice since I had the text being uh, blue in there. And this orange and blue aren't really 
it's very pleasing on your eyes so we're just going to kind of play around here till we find one that looks a little bit better so there we go it, it was pretty simple to do i can turn off some of this with the header row i can turn off some of the banded rows and play with these other things so it gives you some options there if you just you can kind of find the look that you're you're trying to get here uh, next up we're going to be doing some sorting of some data here for our last piece we're going to be sorting some data we're going to be doing it alphabetically we're going to be doing it chronologically and we're going to be doing it in numerical order so i have a salary data table i've created here it's got six people on it it's got their birthdays it's also got how much they're making annually from this i go up to my table tools and i go into layout i have a button over here called sort now the sort button asks me a couple questions first when it pulls up this dialog menu it says first off what are we sorting by is there a header row or is there not a header row in this particular case there's not one if there was a header row it would say name birthday salary we don't have one of those so don't need to worry about that so let's sort this first by uh, column one in this case it's their names and it recognizes that it is text. I'm going to do it in ascending order. So here we go. Here's alphabetical order. We click that. We now have it. Adam, Cindy, D-Nice, Frank, Irina, Mark. Let's sort this again, but let's do it by their birthdays. This time I'm going to be using, again, no header row. But let's use column two. And let's do it from the youngest to the oldest. So it recognizes that I have a date in here. And I'm going to do this in descending order. So when I click this, what I get is Frank, who is our youngest person, appears at the top of the list, and it goes all the way down through Mark. One last sort, and we will be done. Uh, we're going to do this numerically. Again, I'm going to choose column three. You could choose either from lowest to highest or from highest to lowest. Let's go from lowest to highest. We click OK. We can see Frank starts the list, and D-Nice ends it at 79,400. So this is it for this video. Um, Standard 6, we'll be talking about managing your references in the document.